Hello band students, this is Mr. Gralty um, and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to create a video that will show you how we read music. Now I know that many of you know how to read music already which is great, this will be a wonderful review for you. Um, however there are also some of us in band that maybe don't remember how to read music or haven't really read music in the past and this is going to be a great introduction on how we read music. That way when we start playing songs out of our book um, you can feel successful and we have a, um, an easier time playing the music okay what we're gonna learn is we're gonna learn five things all right these five things number one is the music staff we're gonna learn what that is and how we use it number two is we're gonna learn the clef that we use third thing we're gonna learn is we're gonna learn where the notes live on the staff so we're gonna learn about the lines and spaces. After that, we're going to learn about notes and rests. Rests. And the last thing is we're going to learn about bar lines and measures. Okay? So let's get started. Um, when you are in language arts class, if you wanted to write something down, um, you would probably use a piece of paper or a piece of notebook paper. And notebook paper is a lot easier to write, especially if you're writing in paragraphs. It's easier to write on note paper, notebook paper because it has lines. Imagine how, how difficult it would be if you were just handed a blank sheet of paper and you had to write a full essay. Um, the lines kind of help keep things organized. That way the reader has an easier time to interpret what you're trying to write. And music is the same way. Instead of just writing on a blank sheet of paper, um, we have a music staff that we put music on. Now the music staff looks like this. What we have is we have five lines that are horizontally drawn across. Three, four, five. And this is our music staff, okay? We have five lines, and the lines go like this. From the bottom up, we have one, two, three, four, and five, okay? Now, because we have five lines, it also creates four spaces in between those lines. So we have space number one, number two, number three, and number four. So what we can do now that we have this music staff is we can put our music on these lines or spaces and depending on the line or space that it's on um, it will have a different sound or different note and we'll just read the notes and we'll connect the dots and that's what that's how we read music. Okay. Now the music staff is built like a ladder. You can imagine um, kind of like a person going up this ladder and each line is kind of a rung of the ladder if we have a person climbing up as you go higher up the ladder the sound that we make will also be higher so for example if you wanted to play a higher note that note is probably going to be higher on the music staff um, and vice versa is true also if you go lower on the music staff or if you have a note that's written lower then the sound is going to be lower as well Okay, so again, the music staff is five lines. Inside of those five lines are created four spaces, and the music staff operates like a ladder. Um, as you go higher up the music staff, you'll get a higher sound. Lower on the music staff, you'll get a lower sound. At the beginning of the music staff, we have to write something. Let me draw a music staff again. Here's one line, two lines, three lines, four lines, five lines. Okay. The beginning of a music staff, we have something called a clef. Now, a clef just tells us where, like, what letter names are on each line or space, and depending on your instrument, you'll be using a different clef. Okay. Now, you, if you remember back to elementary school, you have probably seen something that looks like that. All right, this is called a treble clef. 
Okay. We also have another clef that we use in band class, and that clef looks like this. This should be familiar to you also if you are someone who played piano. Um, typically, for piano, what, what piano music looks like for you is the um, ones with this clef, it'll be, um, this will be like right hand notes, and then this one will be left hand notes. And basically all that means is the higher notes are using the treble clef and the lower notes are using this clef right here, which is called the bass clef. Now bass clef is spelled B-A-S-S, -S, um, kind of like the fish bass, but it's pronounced bass clef. All right. Um, bass clef is typically used for lower sounds, while treble clef is used for higher sounds. All right, so these are our two clefs, treble and bass clef. They both go at the beginning of your music staff. So depending on what instrument you are, you'll have either the treble clef at the beginning or you'll have the bass clef at the beginning, just like that, okay? Now, let me scroll down here. Let me draw my five lines, draw my music staff again. There's one, two, three, four, and five, okay? We're gonna start with the treble clef. I'll talk about the bass clef after, okay? There's my treble clef. Okay? Now, if you think again back to elementary school, many of you probably remember um, a four letter word that told you what letter name the notes are in the spaces between the lines. All right, I want you to think of that, that four letter word. Okay? That four letter word is face. F A C E. And what face tells us is that if, for example, if we have a note on this bottom space here, then that note's name would be F. Okay. If we have a note, say, on this third space up, that note would be a C. If it was on the top space, that would be an E. If it was on the second space, we would call that note an A. All right. So that's for the spaces. That one's pretty easy. Most students tend to remember that one really, really well. For the lines, again, this is for treble clef. For the lines, we have a few sentences that we can memorize, okay? A common one that people use in elementary school is every good boy does fine. I've also heard um, every good boy deserves fudge. Um, I know that at Mapledale Elementary, they kind of combine the letters into a made-up word called Igabaduff. The sentence that I like to use is elephants go belly dancing Fridays. And I like elephants go belly dancing Fridays because it makes me think of these giant elephants belly dancing, which is just weird and they just shouldn't do, um, on a Friday. It's just something silly that um, to me is really easy to remember. So again, you can memorize it every which way that you want. It doesn't matter which sentence you use as long as you have E, G, B, D, and F um, in that order. Okay? And again, what this tells us is if you have, for example, a note on the bottom line, then that note's letter name would be E. If it was, for example, on this third line, that would be a B, and so on and so forth. Okay, This is for treble clef. Now let's talk about bass clef. So let me uh, redraw our music staff. There's one line, two, three, four, five. Let me draw my bass clef. There we go. Now, bass clef doesn't follow the same rules as treble clef. So treble clef, we have face, and elephants go belly dancing Fridays. For bass clef, the spaces and the lines have different letter names. All right? This one, um, typically students tend to have a little more trouble with the bass clef. It's not as familiar. Um, it's not, um, I don't think elementary music teachers spend as much time on bass clef, um, but it is something that, that you should know. Um, and so, 
What we have for the spaces is this sentence. We use, whoops, we use all cows eat grass. So that's all cows eat grass. And again, what that means is any note that's on this space right there, for example, that note would be an A. If it was on this third space up, that would be an E. If it was on the top space, it would be a G. The second space would be a C. All right, so all cows eat grass. All cows eat grass. All right. For the lines, we have a different sentence. Um, the sentence that I like to use is great burritos don't fall apart. Great burritos don't fall apart. Um, I've always had, I've, I've also heard um, good boys do fine always. That's a, a very popular one. I've also heard go beg dad for allowance, which I think is a pretty fun one. Um, if I were a kid and I heard that, that would make me smile because I'd go beg dad for allowance and hopefully I'd get some money. Um, but either one of those sentences or any one of those sentences, again, will work. Um, just as long as you have the correct letters in the correct order, G, B, D, F, and then A. And again, what this tells us for base clef is if you have a note that's on this bottom line, that note would be a G. If it was on this fourth line, for example, well, that note would be an F, so on and so forth. Okay. Now, why do we need to know two clefs? Well, depending on our instrument, you're going to use one of these two clefs, okay? And again, think back how we said higher sounds typically use the treble clef and lower sounds typically use the bass clef. And that means that depending on our instrument, you're going to use a different clef as well. So the people who will use treble clef are these instruments. Flutes. You can probably guess dependent by how the instrument sounds. Clarinets will also use a treble clef. Saxophones will use the treble clef as well, and trumpets. Okay. The students who will use the bass clef are the students that play lower or bigger sounding instruments, and that's the trombone, and you guessed it, the baritone. So trombone, baritone, you're going to be focusing on using the bass clef, so you need to know all cows eat grass and go beg dead for allowance or great burritos don't fall apart. If you are playing a flute, clarinet, saxophone, or a trumpet, you're thinking face and elephants go belly dancing Fridays. All right, so let's um, scroll back up here real quick. Let's go to our learning targets and let's kind of check some things off here. We learned about the music staff, we got that. We learned our clefs, treble clef and bass clef. We learned about the lines and spaces and which notes go where. We learned some um, words and some sentences that help us remember where the notes go. Um, now let's talk about some notes and rests, okay? So when we have music, let's say for example, um, we wanted to play a note E, okay? And let's say that I'm a composer and I want you to play this note for four counts. One, two, three, four, and then off. Okay? I could draw that note like this. And in fact, if I wrote this on a piece of paper and wrote out instru instructions this way, um, you would probably be able to understand and figure out how to make that sound or make the right sound and make it last the right number of counts. Um, however, the problem with that is you guys can see how much space it takes up on my paper. And if I have a longer piece of music or if I have multiple notes that are happening with different lengths and at different times, well then our music can get very, very complicated and very confusing to read. So what musicians have done is we have developed or we've created a system of symbols that we use to write music, okay? Now, the symbol that we would use, if I wanted to take all of this and write that using a musical symbol, the musical symbol that I would use is a 
circle. Okay, now in music, a circle is something that we call a whole note. Okay, a whole note gets four counts. And it can be any note. It could be an E, an F, a G, an A, a B. Um, but a whole note, if it just has a circle, um, that gets four counts. Okay? Now, in music, everything, every type of music, doesn't matter what it is, it could be pop, it could be classical, it could be opera, whatever. Um, note, um, music is made up of two things. It's made up of sounds and silences. Sounds and silence, okay? The notes are the sounds, okay? But we also have to have the silence. Um, you could think, you could imagine, you know, if we just had sound and no silence, well then the music isn't really gonna sound like music. It would probably be more noise than anything. And the vice versa is also true. If you, if you had just silence but no sound, well then you're not really listening to music. You're just sitting there doing, doing nothing. So you need both, both sound and silence in order to create music. So again, the sounds are the notes, for example, a whole note, and the silences are what we call rests, okay? And just like we have a whole note, we also have something that's called a whole rest. And it looks kind of like that. That's a whole rest. Um, I like to think about it like it's a hole in the ground and you can imagine a person walking and they walk forward and they fall into the hole and they get hurt and yeah it's a pretty pretty gruesome example but again whole rest now be careful whole note and whole rest are spelled w h o l e not whole h o l e it's like a whole pizza all right so you have a whole note whole rest just like a whole note a whole rest also gets four counts okay so if I were to write music, let's say for example, I wanted you to play a whole note and a whole rest. I could write it this way. Let's go back to our note E just as an example. I could write it like this. One, two, three, four, off. And then I could write the word rest. And then draw my arrow. And we could write one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. And if we wanted to, I could go back and forth and I could write out music this way. But again, that takes up a lot of space. So instead of writing E with arrows and rests and numbers and parentheses, um, what we can do is we can just use a whole note followed by a whole rest. And you can kind of see how this is a lot easier to read. These notes and rests is a lot less confusing than trying to read all of that. Okay, so we're going to use notes and rests. Okay, now if I just draw a note on a blank piece of paper and I asked you what letter name or what buttons would you press on your instrument to make that note? Well, you would be very confused. You wouldn't know what note that is. So what we need to do is we need to now take our notes and our rests and we need to put them onto our music staff. So let's do that right now. Let's draw our five lines and our four spaces. Let me erase this. Here's my five lines. Two, three, four, five lines. Some four spaces are created. Um, I'm going to put a treble clef again trombones and baritones, you're going to be using bass clef. I'm just going to use treble clef for now. Okay. And let's say, for example, we wanted to play, uh, let's go with this note right here, put a whole note. And after that, let's say, let's pretend like the, what I wanted you to do is I wanted you to rest for four counts. So let's put a whole rest and let's do another whole note and we'll make another whole rest. And that'll be our, our pattern for now. Whole note, whole rest, whole note, whole rest. Um, again, that looks a lot more organized. Um, now, because it's on a music staff, you now know what note to play. By the way, if we go back to elephants, go 
belly dancing Fridays, we know that that note, the letter name would be the note B. Okay. And then we have the whole rest as well. Okay. Now this looks good and we have, you know, two notes and two rests, but as we keep going and imagine playing a, a piece of music that's really, really long, maybe it's a whole page or more than one page, then this might get a little confusing if we just have, you know, note followed by rest, followed by note, rest, note, rest, so on and so forth. Um, that could get confusing if you just read it that way. And so what we do is we're going to use these lines. I'm going to draw them here in yellow. We're going to put these vertical lines okay, every four beats. Okay, every four beats. Now these lines here are called bar lines. And bar lines are like the spaces between words in in the English language, right? You could imagine if you were trying to read um, one of the Harry Potter books, and imagine trying to read a Harry Potter book, but all of the words were smushed together. So there was no punctuation, and there was no spaces between the letters. Um, that would not be a very fun book to read, and you probably it would be, it'd be very confusing um, to read to read all those letters jumbled up together. Okay, and so these bar lines create um, enough space, or they break up how the music looks, so that it's easier to count and it's easier to read. Now, these bar lines also create we go let's do this in purple these bar lines also create you can see these boxes of music okay and on this on this um, music staff that we have here we have four boxes of music so we have one two three four boxes of music okay each box of music created by two bar lines has a special name and that name we're gonna call that box of music is a measure okay. a measure a measure is a box of music measure is a box of music all right um, we're gonna stop right there if you feel very comfortable with all of this information I know that that's a lot um, but this is the the basics of how we want to read music and when we start playing in our books this week um, this is what you're gonna need to know so that you can be successful at playing your instrument all right so let's scroll back up to our learning targets let's review this really quickly um, we have our music staff five lines and four spaces we have our two clefs bass clef and treble clef again depending on what instrument you play you're going to use one of those two clefs we know the lines and the spaces we know what notes go on which lines and spaces if you are reading the treble clef you're thinking of face f-a-c-e for the spaces you're also thinking of elephants go belly dancing fridays that's for the lines if you're reading bass clef then you're thinking of all cows eat grass on the spaces you're also thinking of um, great burritos don't fall apart for the lines. I'll scroll down and I'll show you that right here. Okay, so there's the treble clef. Here's the bass clef. All right, so we got that. We also learned about notes and rests. We learned about whole notes and whole rests. Whole notes and whole rests are, again, just a very symbolic way or an easier way of writing um, kind of drawn out letters and numbers. And if we put those notes and rests on a music staff then that'll tell us what note to play or what buttons to push or what slide position to put our slide in if we're playing trombone um, and then as we start playing longer music or full songs then what we're going to be seeing is we're going to have these bar lines that are here in yellow the bar lines divide up the music or add some space between the the, the notes and the rests um, so that it's easier to read. And these boxes of music here that are created by the bar lines, these boxes of music are called measures. All right? That's a lot of information that I've given you in this video. Um, make sure that you are watching this, and you, you can watch it many, many times, which is why we wanted to give this to you as a video. Um, but this is very, very important information that way when um, that you need to know in order to play your instrument and in order to play the music that we're going to be doing um, in band class, okay?
If you need any extra help, um, please feel free to ask me or Mr. Von Waldy. We're happy to work with you. Um, you can also come in during recess and get some extra help reading if you want to, or if you just want to practice your instrument, um, you can work with me and Mr. Von Waldy as well. All right. Um, I'm really proud of you guys. I know that you guys are working hard. Um, we're getting really good at playing our instruments, and um, I'm happy with where the fifth grade band is so far. All right. Um, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching this video, and have a great day.